recreations of Dodge City in 1877 were doubtful women, strong drink, and day and night gambling. Dodge was a frontier cow town, and it had passed laws against crime, but not against sin. On the other hand, respectable citizens expected Marshal Wyatt Earp to keep both sin and crime away from the right side of the Santa Fe tracks. What is now known as the Battle of the Long Branch Saloon was a typical example of frontier hypocrisy. It threatened Wyatt's reputation and his job. Get out of here. I'm not selling out. Nobody's going to run me out. You've had your notice, Luke. We made you a fair offer. Now you get nothing. What's the matter, Mr. Short? They've been threatening me, Marshal. They say they ain't on, but I doubt it. Just a private business argument, Marshal. Yeah, no concern of yours. Lift them. See if they got any guns, Hal. What are you taking up for Luke Short, Marshal? You got an interest in the Long Branch? No, sir. The graph's clean. I'll have to look Get away from me. Come here. Derringer. You can come to my office and pick out that gun tomorrow, sir. I'll go on back to your saloon. Al, go see if you can find Sheriff Masterson. Right. Let's go inside. And then Cockrell and the Graf try to buy me out. I figure their place below the line wasn't doing too well, but... They offered me peanuts for the Long Branch. Quiet. Maybe this is just another plain, old-fashioned route. Huh? It looks like it. You know, I'm the one that talked to you into buying this place from Doc Holliday. Oh, I'm not blaming you for that, Wyatt. That price was right, and I've been making money. You know, just the same, I feel responsible. I'm going to ask Judge Tobin for a restraining order against Mr. Cockrell and Mr. DeGraff. Restraining order? What's that? Well, that puts them on legal notice not to interfere with you or your place of business. Puts them on legal notice? Well, why, don't you know a gambler can't run to the court for help? Well, you don't understand. I want to help you myself, but... Well, I can't mount guard on a saloon. A restraining order gives me legal authority in case they try to roust your place. Otherwise, they can just send hoodlums in here, they can tear up your place, and all they got to do is pay a small fine for... Disorderly conduct. No, sir. A court injunction is the new way to do things, Mr. Short. Well, thanks just the same. Too modern for you? I'm old fashioned. <laughs> Wyatt wants to see you. Yeah, I was afraid of that. You heard about the trouble Luke Short's been having, huh? I came to help him. Luke and I are old pals. He saved my scalp once. Yeah, I know, but you're the sheriff. You can't... Oh, up now. You don't see any star, do you? I was the sheriff. I resigned. All right. You see Wyatt before you get in any gunfights. Sure, sure. You tell him I'll be around. And I just don't understand Wyatt. This idea of asking a judge to make Cockrell and DeGraff behave. <laughs> it's why it's gonna might, Loco. No, he just hates trouble, Luke. But Al and Jim were just laughing at a court order. Sure. But Wyatt's got the town quieted down, and he wants to keep it that way. Deacon Earp, they call him. Uh-oh. Everybody out! We're gonna take this place apart! Drop those goods! We'll drop you! Good job. Then you get mixed up in a stupid saloon brawl. I'd hoped you'd grown up. 
You're a spoiled brat. This was mostly your fault, you know. My fault, huh? Sure, you helped Doc Holliday sell that place to Luke. The other saloon owners didn't bother Doc. They were afraid of him. Uh. Now, let me finish, will you? They were afraid to rouse Doc Holliday, but they're not scared of Luke. Luke was a pretty fair hand with a gun, but he's not in our class, and you knew that. You finished? Yes, sir. Did Mr. Short give you an interest in the Long Branch? No, sir. He sold me 10%. He sold you 10%. That's right. All right. Here's an application for a restraining order. I want you to sign it, then I want you to get Luke to sign it. This makes all of us promise to keep the peace. That's right. Wyatt, you don't believe that Cockrell and DeGraff are going to lay off the Long Branch after we just shot up a few of their rousters? If they don't, they'll get six months to a year in jail. Contempt of court. Judge Tobin will throw the book at him. Well, I don't know. It puts me in a funny spot. You put yourself in a funny spot. Why did you resign? Why'd you quit? Never mind. Don't answer that. You and I, we've worked long and hard to get this town calmed down. We've got an honest judge now. The time has come to make use of court orders like that one. All right. All right, I'll sign. I'll try to get Luke to sign. And I just want to get you into trouble. Marshal's office sent us a paper. Hal served it on me. Legal summons. James Cockrell and Al DeGraff will appear before Circuit Judge Tobin at 9 a.m. tomorrow to show cause why a restraining order should not be issued against them. The order will bind all parties to the dispute at the Long Branch Saloon to keep the peace. Hmm. One of Earp's cute tricks. Yeah. If Earp hasn't got an interest in that saloon, then his pal Bat Masterson has. No. You'll tell Tobin a thing or two about Deacon Earp. <laughs> and now, Your Honor, I've got something to tell you that perhaps you don't know. Bat Masterson is a partner in the Long Branch Saloon. And I suspect that Marshal Earp also has an interest in the business. Oh, see here. That's a liar. Order! Order! Order. Order. Proceed, Mr. Cockrell. Al DeGraff and I weren't involved in that ruckus yesterday. So why is Marshal Earp asking for a restraining order against us? Your Honor, isn't it obvious? Not now, Mr. Masterson. Mayor Kelly and I wish to question Marshal Earp in chambers. Courts recess for half an hour. And all I'm trying to do is to stop another fight at the Long Branch. Now, Mr. Masterson and Mr. Short have proven their good faith by applying for an injunction. I don't see who... Where Bat's having an interest in the place or the fact that he and I are friends should enter into the case. It'll make you look bad with the public, Wyatt. Yes, it will. You'll appear to be taking sides in a brawl between saloon keepers. Well, I can't be a hypocrite, Judge. What? Look, Mayor Kelly used to own a saloon. It's a legal business in this town. But you advised me to quit, and I did. Sure, Mr. Kelly, and I'm not defending the saloon business now. But there's no law against it. Why, our town is largely supported by taxes from liquor. You're our marshal, Wyatt. For your sake, I can't grant the injunction. Now, you'll thank Judge Tobin when you've had time to think about this. Application denied. All right, gentlemen. I'll just have to try and keep the peace my own way. We're going to need some more guns, Luke. Charlie Bassett and Neil Brown will help. I'll send for them. No, two of those hoodlums died. I favor waiting to see if Wyatt can handle it his way. Yeah, but Tobin and Kelly let him down. Maybe he was right. Maybe shooting your way out of arguments is an old fogey notion. Another roust. Come on. No, wait. Give Wyatt a chance. Let's take it apart, boys. That's what we're here for. There's six of them in there. Why don't need help? Too late now. $500 damage, Luke. Al, let's go see Mr. Cockrell and DeGraff. You stay here. We'll handle this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You handle it.
You boys know how local politics are in a town like this. Yeah, Jim's right, boys. You gotta remember that most of is. our business is located... <laughs> Mr. Cockrell, it's about time you and I had a nice little heart-to-heart -heart talk. Bring Mr. DeGraff. I want him to hear it, too. Now, I can't prove you hired those cowhands, but I don't have to. I want $500 for the damages you did. I'll go get it. You turn into plain robbery, Earp? Jim don't mean that. I'll... I'll get it for you. I told you to get it. What if I don't? Mr. Cockrell doesn't appreciate the fact that I'm trying to save his life. Al, you go up the street and tell Mr. Masterson and Mr. Short to arm themselves. Don't be a fool. They'll shoot us down and then he'll say it was a fair fight. And it will be. You'll be wearing guns when I shove you out that door. Wait, Al. Five hundred, did the marshal say? Go get it. Now, one more rouse to the Long Branch, and I'm gonna close your saloon and every saloon below the line. You pass the word, Mr. Cockrell. You think he'd dare close everything below the line? That's just what I want him to do. We'll pass the word, all right. The next roust will be a real one. They paid damages, $500. Well, that's the fastest civil suit I ever heard of. But thanks. You know, I think every saloon owner below the line is in on this. Mr. Short, I hope the 500 is enough to pay for the damages. It's good of you, Marshal. That's not going to get them off our backs. No, sir, I'm afraid not. Luke's tired of fighting. You tired? No. But I don't want to get you in too deep. You know, Mr. Masterson, I made another mistake. This isn't just a brawl between saloon keepers. There's a right and wrong in the liquor business. Dodge City's going to have to face the issue. You know what Mr. Kelly and the judge tried to pull on me today? They said that everything that happens below the line is sin and that we shouldn't bother to get our nice, clean coats spotted. The hypocrites. Yeah. That's why I hope you and Mr. Short will hang on. We will. What about the next roust? Well, I told Mr. Cockrell and Mr. DeGraff that one more roust and I was going to close every saloon below the line. If they jump your place again, don't do any fighting. You leave that to me and the deputies. Another hullabaloo at the Long Branch. What is this now, Wyatt? Well, I'm uh, fighting for sin, according to you, Mr. Kelly. And a fine spectacle it is, too. Jim Cockrell told me that you took 500 from him for damages. And he claims he doesn't even know who made the disturbance. Well, he's a liar. And I'm going to close every saloon in this town the next time there's a roust at the Long Branch. Well, that you can't do that. Why? Well, they'd sue the city. They'd drag the whole nasty business into open court. Well, that's where I think it belongs. Girls, gambling, liquor? You must be daft. Mr. Kelly, when I took the job in this town, man's life wasn't safe on Front Street. True. You got crime well in hand. Judge Tobin and I appreciate it. No, you don't. I asked the court authority to restrain some liquor peddlers from using violence to force a rival saloon out of business. But we told you, for your own good name. My name isn't that good. I'm a sinner and so are you. And so is Judge Tobin. When things get too sinful below the line, sin and bust loose all over this town. You and the judge just close your eyes to it. We're not preachers. Neither am I. I can't reform Dodge City. But you're threatening to drag sin into public court. If that's the only way I can keep sin from turning into crime, yes. No. I'm warning you. The crowd moving toward the Long Branch. Ted and Louie are on the way over there now. Masterson said he promised you not to fight. We could sure use him. Let's get over there. Well, Mr. Mayor, keep your eyes closed real tight. Our sinners are going to have ourselves a little old shanty gal.
Grab a gun, Bat. You loot both. They're half drunk and mean. You promise Wyatt not to fight? Well, we could run out the back door. No. Piece by piece. You get the back door. What a good rough boys, Jim. Yeah. I told him to take the long branch apart board by board. All right, outside. Outside? That's right, that's your mob out there and you're gonna leave them. Hands waist high, let's go. Whatever you do, whatever you do, don't break up the liquor, we'll drink that. Come on, now. That's it, Well, that's what's gonna happen. Why, it's with them. They're starting up the street. What's the matter, gentlemen? What are you hanging back for? These are the men that hired you to rouse the Long Branch. They'll lead you. Easy, men. Purple, shoot us. I know, Mr. DeGraff, why I wouldn't shoot you, Al. Now, we're just going to stand over here and uh, just kind of watch all of the fun. What's the matter, Mr. Cockrell? You're a natural born leader of men. All you got to do is raise your hand, just say, follow me. Take that big headed John Law first. Well, go on, take him. Well, go on, fellas, start shooting. Well, we won't hit your bosses. Well, who ever heard of men like your bosses getting hurt? You scared of two men? Cut him down! You start it! Yeah. 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 I'm not scared of Wyatt Earp. Well, go ahead and draw. I'll wait. You want to die for them? Well, if you could get me before Wyatt gets you. No takers? They'll fight to the last drop of your blood. Not our blood. Better take your gun, Joe. Al, get a wagon. Loaded with one by sixes. We're closing the saloons. Right. What? You gonna close us too? That's right, Mr. Masterson. Every saloon in town. The bunt line, the bunt line special. It was the longest, fastest shooting iron ever to fight for the law. The bunt line, the bunt line special. It never missed or lost a battle and never was beat on the draw. Ooh. Marshal Earp. Judge Tobin wants you in court at once. For what? Read the summons. I might add in behalf of my client, Mr. Cockrell, malfeasance in office is too mild a charge. See you in court, Earp. And I submit, Your Honor, the plaintiff has shown conclusive evidence why Marshal Earp should immediately be removed from office. Uh, we ask further that his illegal action in closing the city saloons be declared null and void. Order! Order! Marshal Earp, you've heard the charges against you. Have you anything to say? Proceed, Mr. Earp. Your Honor, I have plenty to say, but I ask the courtroom be cleared. On what grounds? 
I'm going to have to talk about sin in Dodge City. I'm going to name names and cite facts that I don't think should become public property. <laughs> if the court please. Yes, Mayor Kelly. I agree with Wyatt, uh, Marshal Earp. His testimony should be given in private. Mr. Dunbar, do you agree that the courtroom be cleared? I see no reason for it, Your Honor. The point at issue is not the alleged sinfulness of Dodge City, but whether Marshal Earp abused the powers of his office. Mr. Dunbar, your wife is in the courtroom. My wife? Well, this is outrageous, Your Honor. I, I have nothing to hide. Let Mr. Earp confine his testimony to the points at issue in this case. Your Honor, I believe the court must rule. You will proceed with your testimony. Mr. Dunbar owns a quarter interest in the Alamo Saloon. He's also a partner with Miss Josie Debers in the Dreamland Dance Hall. That's a lie. I object, Your Honor. Order! Counsel will conduct himself properly. This court fails to see how Mr. Dunbar's business ventures are relevant to the charges against you. Your Honor, malfeasance in office is a felony, a crime. Now, in order to show that I acted within police powers, I intend to prove criminal conspiracy between certain saloon owners and their silent partners to destroy the business of the Long Branch. Now, I have here a list of certain prominent Dodge City men who were silent partners in saloons, dance halls, and disreputable resorts. Order! Court, please! Order! Your Honor, please! Yes, Mayor Kelly. Wyatt's telling the absolute truth. If you permit this case to continue, I'll have to testify to what I know about my fellow citizens, including Miles Dunbar. I've had enough of this, Your, your Honor. Mr. Dunbar? My clients have deceived me. I, I withdraw from the case. Very well. On the basis of Marshal Earp's statement, this court is bound to conclude that the public interest cannot be served by further washing of our dirty linen. Yeah, yeah. The charges against Marshal Earp are dismissed, and the saloons will remain closed until, in his judgment, improved conditions warrant their reopening. Court is adjourned. Now, gentlemen, men like Mr. Cockrell and Mr. DeGraff don't belong in the saloon business. I want you saloon keepers and gambling house owners to get rid of them. You proved to me that you made up your minds to break with the past and I'll let you open for business. That's fair enough with me. That's, fair enough. That's a deal, Marshal. We'll get rid of them. Let's, take Let's go. go. See you Come gentlemen on. later. Put them on good now. Horses and Let's go, boy. Well, looks like the trouble's over, Luke. You sure you want to sell your interest? Cash. Pay me. Been a real friend, Bat. That makes us even. I'll see you around. I'm out of the saloon business. Good. You can take your profit and buy into a dance hall. Oh, you you give this to the school. Good. Wait a minute. Now, there's something about it, Deputy Star. Don't get rich if you're honest, and they uh, bury you if you're slow. But a pot metal star, you can keep that clean. Yes, sir. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame and long live his glory and long may his story be 